of Scotland. We're back. High mileage cars and fuel builds the size of a jumbo jet are the hallmarks of any landscape photographer. There's no escaping those long journeys, but those snow-capped hills are often enough to keep you coming back time and again. Put some music on and enjoy the drive. The weather forecast indicated there might be a chance of some snow in Scotland, and that's exactly what's happened. And albeit it's only a light covering of the white stuff, it's fantastic. What more could you want? some of the best scenery on the planet made to look even more picturesque. What I want to do is I want to get some fantastic drone images as well whilst I'm here. I'm going to take some normal landscape shots from the ground. I want to get some big panoramas really showing off all of that snow-covered scenery around Glencoe, Glen Etive. It's a favourite place of mine to shoot anyway. And I want to do something different. I want to get in the air with this one as well. We may well have a drive further into Scotland. I'm not sure what the plans are. Let's just see what happens. I'm just pretty excited to be out and back vlogging again. It's been a little while and it's nice to have found a bit of motivation and passion to get back in and come and film and shoot. I'm a little bit nervous. here in the Glencoe Ski Lodge Cafe. But more importantly, I've got Guinness. I'm not sure it's a good idea because it's minus six outside, so tonight's camping could be a uh, could be cold. However, John's in the lodge, so we may all end up squeezing out of the lodge. Let's see how we're gonna go. What I am going to do is I'm going to try and squeeze out and do something that I don't really do very much of these days, which is a little bit of astro photography. Now, I am not the best astro photographer in the world. Probably one of the worst, so God knows how it's going to turn out. But because it's something that I don't do, and we're here, and it's night, and I've turned up late, I just think to myself, why the hell not? Let's go and shoot something a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm pretty excited to do it, so... Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to spend a bit of time doing a little bit of editing and seeing if I can actually get something that's quite good. So whatever you see in this video, up here or bam now, please forgive me if it's absolutely atrocious, because it may well be. Definitely need to have another beer before I do this. Some Irish people are going to string me up for calling that beer. Out. Sorry. See you in a bit. Really, really clear sky however it's a little bit too bright there's actually quite a bright moon and uh, whilst that's great on the foreground it's just a, a little bit too bright overall but I think we've got a couple of things I don't do a lot of astrophotography I haven't done any for a long time so it's been interesting tonight I've kept it pretty straight I'm gonna use a layered composition I've shot a couple of things at different apertures to get a bit more depth of field as well and uh, I've tried to keep the shutter speed down to about sort of 15 seconds ish. Uh, I've shot a lot at 24 mil and then some at 16 mil. Um, so uh, hopefully we've not got too many star trails in there. Well, it's relatively early in the morning and. Uh, We've all had a half decent night's sleep really, it's nice and warm. So if you want somewhere which is a little bit warmer than a standard tent, and then come and stop in one of these little Glencoe lodges as you can see here. Um, small, cosy and uh, yeah, they're pretty good. So a little heater in here and uh, 
Yeah, you can get yourself settled in. I would bring yourself either a secondary heater or at least bring a really good sleeping bag because there still is a little bit of chill there. So, been discussing with Snake what she wants to do this morning. She's not completely happy about panoramic drones, no? No. She thinks that we should go for more traditional land-based panoramic photography, don't you? Yes. But uh, we're going to see what happens. Sometimes she gets her own way. The issue is, is that she's started to become something of a Nikon fan, really, like John. Look at him there. So you've always got to be careful with these Nikon users. They're a little bit mental, if you ask me. Canon's the future. Right, so we're here at the side of the road at Rannock Moor, and this is a, a location that I have shot so many times. I'm in a spot that I actually shot last year again, and I've shot this probably six, seven times over the years. Really like this. Now, I did get some drone footage last year uh, using one of the Phantoms, but this year I've got an Inspire 2 with me, so I want to get some better quality footage. Um, I was panicking this morning because there was no snow when we, we first woke up, or it wasn't snowing, shall I say. There's plenty of ice. Uh, however, uh, all of a sudden we got quite a burst of snow coming through and quite a little bit of wind, and I thought, I'm not going to be able to get the drone up here, but it has stopped. That said, sunrise at the moment doesn't look like it's happening. There was quite a lot of mist at the start, and that mist has now lifted. And that's a shame, because although there's more clarity in the shots, we've definitely lost a little bit of atmosphere and mood. Um, compositionally, there's so many choices here that you're not going to struggle to get a shot that works. Uh, I'm probably going to recreate an earlier shot, hopefully with better conditions. But we Well, it starts snowing again, so I've had to bring the drone down. A little bit frustrating, if I'm honest, because I think there were some nice shots to be had. We've had no sunrise, let's be honest, it's been dull and grey. But I tell you what, that's fantastic, it really is, because the mist that had lifted before, I mean, it has lifted at ground level, but there was still plenty of mist in the distance, so it's giving it that really cold, typical Scottish winter feel, and I'm never, ever going to complain at those type of shots. So what I've done is I've got some big panoramics um, with, the, with the Inspire 2. Now, I know a lot of you guys really say things in, in previous videos like, oh, we get a bit bored with the drones and drone footage. And, and do you know something? You know, I kind of have, have been sort of a bit understanding of that. But I've got to the stage now where I, I really have to disagree because as a photographer, your job is to get the best possible image. The drone is just a camera. And these, these things have got so good now. With DJI's um, X7 cameras, you're getting effectively full frame sensor, full frame quality, 20 odd megapixel. You can get just as good quality images with the, um, with the UAV as you can with a, a full frame camera. So it just gives you an opportunity to do something completely different, get different shots. The things that I've got today, I literally just could not have got in any other way. So um, that's me ranting and that's enough ranting for now I'm gonna leave it there I'm just happy to have got some shots in the bag I haven't even got my cannon out here yet I can see John just sauntering back here now so um, let's see what he's got and what he's been up to hopefully he's got some decent images in the bag now, this is a road that drives up to the Glencoe mountain resort to the right hand side of here we've got Etive uh, Etive Moor just uh, literally sort of 500 yards to the right. Um, up ahead, we've got Black Rock Cottage, which I don't know if you're going to see that as we just drive past it. Um, this road is now quite icy, so I'm just being quite careful. As I said earlier on, I made a wrong choice of car, I came up in this, and I should have come in something that was four wheel drive anyway. That's my uh, misfortune. It's probably ruled out a few places that I would like to drive if this weather stays stays like it is. Mayhem in this car boot, I will say that for now. The snow was showing absolutely no sign of stopping. We knew it was unlikely that we would get the drone back up in the air within a couple of hours. Breakfast was the order of the day and we took an opportunity to back up some of the morning's files and start some initial editing at the facilities on site. Oh, 
we're just packing up now at uh, Glencoe Mountain Resort. I'm going to head off and try and uh, take a few photos of some deer if we can find some. The snow has finally stopped. I'm not sure what time it is, but uh, now it's time to get back out with the camera. John's ready, I'm ready. Let's go do this. There are lots of deer all the way through Glencoe and Glen Nativ, but just because they appear to be relatively tame doesn't mean to say they're not wild animals, so a little bit of caution is always advised. I shot most of these images with the 70 to 200 lens, isolating small groups or pairs of deer against clean backgrounds, trying to have simple minimalist compositions and show a little bit of the detail or character of the animals. After getting some of those shots in the bag, I wanted to show the deer in the wider context of this stunning environment. So I shot some wider images with the backdrop of Etty Moor and looking down through the valley towards the Three Sisters, where there was some nice light starting to fall on the hills in the distance. That brings me to the end of part one of my Scottish adventure. Join me in a few days time when I'll be releasing part two showing you new locations and some fantastic footage that we shot whilst in Scotland. I'll also be talking to you about my new Glencoe photo tour workshop which I'll be running later this month and giving you more details. So hope to see you soon, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button below.